All right, I'm here with Scott McCall, which is great to be here talking to you, Scott. Um, you got a new job. I did. Kind of a big Very job. excited. Yeah. Very thankful, honored for the opportunity, and uh, excited to get going. Yeah, as of at first, you are the chief merchant for Walmart U.S. Pretty big retail buying job. A few uh, hundred billion and a great team. So how you feeling? If you're going to be in the retail business and a merchant at heart, this is the job you want. It's a place and, to be. Uh, super excited about it. Actually, John, one thing interesting, I was born in Frankfurt, Germany. So Were you? military yeah. and then uh, grew up in Mississippi. Uh, actually graduated college, University of Arkansas in Fayetteville. So Way to go. Yeah, go That's Razorbacks. Cool. Yeah. And, uh, and then took a job in the management trainee program with Walmart. And I was an assistant manager trainee in store 1074 in, in Grenada, Mississippi. And then actually got promoted to being, become an assistant in Greenville back in the store back that I was in yeah. hometown. So, uh, you know, and then opportunity came to move into the home office. And from there, it's, uh, you know, I just did a lot of different roles. So the, uh, the first role you got in the home office, what was it? Yeah, so I moved into the home office uh, in kind of an operations coordinator role uh, for specialty divisions. Back then, shoes, jewelry, automotive, mm -hmm. uh, those were all considered specialty divisions. And actually, at the time, we had just gone international, and we were trying to, you know, bring those specialty divisions to the international countries. And my very first day on the job, I flew to Mexico City, and, uh, you know, a town of 30 million people, and here I was. It's like Greenville, right? Yeah, a little bit like Greenville, Mississippi, <laughs> but, uh, you know, only at Walmart can you get those kind of experiences and opportunities. And uh, from there, um, after that role for a couple of years, I actually ended up getting into merchandising. And that's where I found my, my true love. And I've been a merchant, you know, for the last 20 yeah, years or ever so. Ever since. Yeah. What are the categories you've been a merchant in? Yep. So I started out, I was, I was buyer in lawn and garden. Mm -hmm. And then I became the divisional merchandise manager in hardware and paint. And then the divisional merchandise manager in toys. And then I became the general merchandise manager running consumables. From there, I went to be the general merchandise manager in health and wellness. And then I moved back into hard lines, and I've been running, most recently, the entertainment, toys, and seasonal business. What always struck me when I was around you was the, the level of detail you could get into in any product, any program, any assortment. What, what is it that, that just interests you that causes you to want to know so much about every item you're trying to sell? Well, I think you got to have a passion for merchandising first. I think, you know, look, we're, we're in a company that we're all merchants first. That's right. And, and I really believe that if, if you fall in love with merchandise and you have a passion for product, you know, then, you know, everything else is, takes care of itself. You know, we talk a lot about tech and capability and operations, and all those are key enablers, and they're extremely important for our success. But if we don't have the right product, then it really doesn't matter. That's what customers keeps customers coming back. You know, it's all about driving comp store sales. Right. It's having the items that customers want. It's having the right value, the right price points, and improving quality every step of the way. That's really important as well. So one of the things, Scott, that um, that you've done that uh, I think really prepares you for the role you're in, not, not just having been a merchant and led big teams and all the other things, but you've got a couple spots in the business where – you're thinking about this in an omni fashion. So you've got some categories where you've got teams who manage walmart.com, they manage all the assortment across the store and the website and just the store. So you've been a leader in, in thinking through what we're, we've been calling omni merchandising. So what have you learned from that? Yeah, well, what I've learned is really it depends on what the customer wants. If, we've, if we keep the customer at the center of all of our decisions and let the customer be right, which Mr. Sam used to always tell us, who's number one, customer. customer. And it, it, it causes you to think about, you know, how we go to market. And at the end of the day, the customer doesn't care whether they buy it in the store, they pick it up, you know, we ship it to home. And so we can't let our structure and our metrics get in the way of what customers want. If the customer likes it, it's our job to figure out how to get it to them. What are things you watch for? It, you know, what catches your attention throughout the day? And you might say, Oh, that's a that's a selling opportunity, or I should look into that. So, just what you know, maybe a couple examples of things that have happened on the outside world that have caused you to change direction on the inside on behalf of customers. Yeah, so I think we have to be a student of the game. If we're going to be in the retail business, you know, we're, we're we really never turn the clock off. And so, for me, I'm always curious. You know, what are customers doing? I don't care if I'm in an airport. I'm looking at luggage. I'm looking at what <laughs> people are wearing. You know, it's you're always on, and as a merchant um, you know, or a retailer, just in general, it's it's having that curiosity. If you look at what can shape us or influence us, you know, again, it's bringing the customer back front and center. 
if, if customers want to have it delivered to home, they want to have it put in their pantry for them, you know, they'll tell us what they want. We just have to listen mm-hmm. and we have to know where to hang out in, in places so that we can connect those dots for customers. Okay, so what's, what's the best item you think you ever bought? Uh, that's a good question. We, the most fun item, back in 2003, uh, General Motors was coming out with the Hummer H2 vehicle. You mm-hmm. remember that? I remember that. Big square. For some reason yeah. it seemed to be yellow. We did something very innovative. We actually worked with General Motors and went uh, upstream in the innovation cycle and partnered with them to get the license. And we launched that item in radio control in a one six scale radio control I remember that uh, for $99. And we bought 100,000 pieces of them. And John, we sold them out in like six or eight weeks. It was unbelievable. And so we went back and we bought, we thought $99, 100,000 pieces. That was a big number back then. And uh, we went back, bought 300,000. We sold them out in another three or four months. We went back and bought a million pieces. You know, and so that was a lot of fun. Big yeah. ticket item, a lot of fun, very timely. And I think trends are so important in merchandising. And that was a good example of detecting a trend early. Actually, the dealerships didn't even have the Hummer H2. But you did. We had it in the Walmart store. But you had it, yeah. Okay, so opposite question. As a merchant, okay to not always get it right. Uh, what's the worst item you remember buying, and do we still have it? There's or? a lot of those. <laughs> a you have lot a thing of called them. a markdown. A it's markdown, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. We. Uh, you know, look, I think merchants have to take risks, and, and clearly this was a risk. I, I remember being a buyer in Lawn and Garden, and I bought a what's called a motel chair. It's a stamped steel uh, chair that is actually was kind of a retro item. It was big in the 60s and 70s, and we thought we could bring it back and make it cool again. Bought 150,000 pieces, and that season for Lawn and Garden, I think we sold 30,000 of them. And we couldn't give them away. And it took us over two years to get through that item. And so, uh, unfortunately, I do have uh, several of those examples. Yeah, it but happens. That's uh, one. You know, we say history uh, indicates what may happen in the future, and sometimes it just indicates what happened in the past. That's right. Yeah, it happens. Um, great learning. So, look, last thing, um, thinking about people and the company's just basic beliefs. We've got, we've got four of them, really three underpinned by integrity. But... Um, I know the company's value is important to you, but just love to hear your thoughts on, on, on the way we work and the principles by which you operate every day. You bet. I think, you know, one thing is we're all in this together. It doesn't matter your level, your title, um, your experience, um, your background. It's, we're all in this together. You know, and Mr. Sam used to talk about the best ideas in this organization come from the bottom up, and I firmly believe that. And I think if we can all see ourselves working together for a common purpose, and that's the customer then we'll be a company that no one will want to compete with. And I think that's where that's we've right. been. That's right. I remember when I was young in my career, I, I, I met Sam once, but uh, not, not a, as an associate at a, at a cookout. My dad was with the company and happened to run across him. And, and I just, I remember, I'll never forget that, that quick introduction. But um, I, I used to hear about things at home, uh, like, like serving customers, trying to be excellent, and respecting individuals. Um, really important things that I learned. And then over the years, we've continued to underpin all that by operating with integrity. And it's, uh, it's been great because it's given me a chance to always stay centered, always be myself, and always know that, that I, could, I could say what I felt was right and I could do what I felt was right because the basic beliefs of the company would support it. Um, and it's great to have somebody, Scott, in your role with so much responsibility who has, has been a part of that and helped shape it over the years. And, you know, I just want to say I'm looking forward to, to what you're, you're doing and uh, what you're going to do with the team. And, you know, all the best. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you.